Okay, so let's now go to section three, types of collagen. Oh, what are all the different types of collagen? There's more than one type. I don't know too much going on. All right, so there's three questions I'm going to cover here. Is there a vegan collagen? Do the types of collagen actually matter? And what's this type two collagen stuff that everybody's talking about? So question number five of the day out of nine is, is there a vegan collagen? So, you know, Neil, you keep talking about animals. <laughs> I'm not into animals. Uh, I still want all these wonderful health benefits. What can you do for me, right? Um, so I, I can say I'm sorry because collagen comes from animals exclusively. From the skins, the bones, the hooves, the hides, the joints, the cartilage, the cowhide, the chicken comb, the skins, the bones, fish scales, all the throwaway stuff from fish, animal organs, and eggs. That's where you get collagen from, period, right? Those things themselves aren't very yummy, <laughs> except maybe eggs and organ meats if you're a weird person and eat organ meats regularly. <laughs> no, you totally should be. Like we, Organ meats would save the day. If you ate more organ meats, you would have lots of great nutrients that you're not exposed to, like collagen. So incorporate organ meats, but that's a hard argument to sell. Just drink bone broth, right? So you know those things are processed to remove and concentrate the collagen, right? And you might say to me, but Neil, I just Googled this, dude. And it says that collagen sources are things like citrus foods or dark leafy green vegetables. And I have to say back to that, that's bull. <laughs> There's no collagen in these compounds. Collagen is animal only. But in these foods, of course, are compounds that are used in the body to make collagen. So that sounds like it makes sense. So okay, eat more of that, then I'll make more collagen. There's a catch. If you had high levels of micronutrients, that doesn't stimulate collagen production. And if it did, that'd be a real problem, right? You know, you're taking 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C to boost your immune system, and your body goes, hot damn, let's make some sexy lips. Like, that would be awesome if you could do both of those things, but of course you can't. You know, I, I think of that meme with the, the women from the TV commercial, like, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works, right? That's when people talk about vegan collagen, that's my my go-to meme and thought, right? So we we really wish that our bodies did that. And we wish that our bodies had like this advanced processing where they can like solve this one particular issue, right? Imagine like I take vitamin C and it gives me collagen where I need it, right? Because essentially what would happen is every time you eat an orange, your gut would harden because it would create collagen right there. And you would have like a really like meshy, almost metallic gut, Right. It's not like that. And so, you know, I'll say that, of course, there are diseases related to nutrition that cause people to not produce collagen. But that's way more serious than the casual stuff that we're talking about here. Nutrition can play a role, of course, in some of this. But, you know, but the, it's extreme. Malnourishment is normally what happens. And I mean malnourishment. And if collagen production is part of that complex of problems, you have way more things to be concerned about than, you know, the aesthetics. So one more notion while we're talking about this, you know, like on this thought train here, you can also overproduce collagen. There are genetic disorders where that happens, uh, but it's not something where it's going to happen if you don't have those kinds of like genetic abnormalities, right? You know, it's not going to make you have luscious hair. It's, it's going to be a real problem otherwise. So there, there are folks that have to deal with that. Um, and that's out of the scope of what we're talking about here today. So the idea, though, that collagen supporting supplements um, exist that, you know, have things that improve your collagen production. That's an absolute sham. And the idea that there are vegan collagen products is a lie. And I think collagen is important. But I get why people avoid animal products. So there's no collagen for vegans. And it's an unfortunate reality. And the thing that I have found is that some folks get really testy about that notion. I can present all of this information and all of that. And folks get really defensive and say that I'm wrong. And I'm not. Unfortunately, like it's just a biology thing. Um, so, yeah, I think it's important that everybody ingest enough proteins, whether they're vegan or not, and ingest lots of micronutrients and healthy foods. But the collagen thing is out. And, you know, you might find that the benefits, the reasons that you're using collagen as a vegan is for the same things, the hair, skin, and nails, and the protein, and the gut health, and all, health and all of that stuff. There are mechanisms to have those things happen from the protein alone, as I mentioned before. So you could be taking a regular protein supplement that's plant-based and cross those 
protein goals and then have healthier hair, healthier skin, healthier nails, all of that stuff. I just don't want you to believe the marketing misinformation, right? I don't want you to spend that money and I don't want you to have that false hope. All right, so question number six, do collagen types matter? What do I mean by that? Well, here's a marketing quote that I wanna read to you because it's a favorite of mine, right? It's, it's, this is pulled from not just some random site, this is pulled from like a top collagen site, okay? With over 16 different known collagen fiber types, and technically there's 30, collagen users must be aware that each type plays a different role within the body. Therefore, expecting a collagen supplement to work miracles without researching the formula first is a quick way to not have expectations met. That is a complete lie, period. And that's a marketing thing that on a re well-regarded website. So the insinuation here is that you need to have a very specific mix of very specific types of collagen, of which not 16, but again, 30. 30 different types of collagen have been identified. And the type of collagen is more indicative of where it's found than other sciencey kind of stuff. There are five types of collagen that are most prominent that people will interact with. Type one, type two, type three, type four, and type five. That's what it is. So like you'll see a collagen product and it'll say type one and three, that's what it means. And what it means is type one has come from tendons and organs and bone and vasculature and skin. Type two is mostly cartilage. Type three is normally found you know, in the reticulate, which is found around all of the stuff from type one. So that's why type one and type three are often together. It's because they're found together and you, it's really difficult to separate them. Type four is found in the gut, that basal lumina. So it's under the epithelium, the lining of the gut. It strengthens the tube. And type five is the stuff that you get in your hair and your skin and your nails, man. So that's, that's it. So at the end of the day, though, that amino acid profile for each of the different types is negligibly different. So the most common type of collagen that you'll ingest is going to be type 1 and type 3 because they're found together. And this is going to be the most common found in humans in general because they're found everywhere and in the supplements that you buy. And by micromanaging the collagen types, you're not going to really have any advantage or benefit. So it's best to just find a great type one and type three collagen because that's probably where you're going to find the best value. So on that same subject, there is this other question, question seven, which is what's this type two collagen stuff, right? Because type two collagen is a unique type of collagen that's been promoted for um, health of the joints. And so I'm going to throw this picture up on the screen here. This is uh, actually from one of our products, and it has in it B2Cool native collagen type 2. And you'll notice a couple things about it, right? Uh, it's not type 1 and type 3, like I said. <laughs> and you would think that since type 2 is found in the joints, it's going to help out with the joints, so I should take it if I have joint pain, right? And that makes a lot of sense. But here's the thing, right? Collagen supplementation is about the protein. And it's normally measured in grams, and there's normally lots of them. So it's not one gram, it's nine grams to 18 grams, you know, a in a typical day or a typical serving even. Uh, the type 2 collagen is dosed at less than 500 milligrams. So we're actually talking about two very, very different things. When we're talking about type 2 collagen, especially the ones found in commercial products, it's not collagen, it's called undenatured collagen. And so it's often referred to as undenatured type 2 collagen or UC2. And so we don't use type 2 collagen like we do all the other kinds of collagens, which is a protein supplement. We're using it to train our body's immune system to stop attacking its own collagen. So the process of using UC2, UC2 collagen is called oral tolerance. Uh, so it's kind of like you know, when you have an allergy and you give yourself small shots of it on a regular basis, it's training your immune system to chill out. You can kind of do the same thing with this UC2 collagen. Now, uh, using UC2 collagen for specific attempts with helping with joint pain, but not protein supplementation or collagen supplementation is fine, but I don't think that it's something that you should start out with. Uh, remember, supplement strategy is about prioritization based on the science. And if you check out my joint health blog, which is hilarious, it's got lots of mentions of marijuana, pictures of Snoop Dogg, drneil.co forward slash joint health, you'll find out what my strategy is and where UC2 fits into that. So I think it's on my holistic care plan, but it's not first wave or second wave or even third wave in some situations. So 
That's the difference between type 2 collagen and the collagen supplements that we're really talking about, which is more about protein.